The V12 is a very old, very antiquated answer to a very old, enduring question, how do you make a lot of power smoothly with a reciprocating engine? Nowadays, with balance shafts and miniature Marvel computers, a turbo four-cylinder does a pretty good job, and more than one company makes a buttery V8 that wouldn't tip over a standing nickel. Add direct injection and turbos and you have V12 power without the size, weight, and moving parts. But there's just something about sitting behind, or in front of, two inline sixes married at the crankshaft. The V12 is the triple axis tourbillon of an increasingly quartz engine world, and it delights us precisely because of its excessive parts count. Oddly, Aston Martin considers itself a V12 company, even though its most glorious David Brown air depended on inline sixes. Carol Shelby and Roy Salvadori won Le Mans behind one in 1959, and the straight six served Aston well into the 1970s, when its attention turned to Bulldog V8s. The company didn't get its first V12 until 2001, a 5,935cc unit made by splicing together two Ford Duratec V6s in a CAD program. Ferrari is a V12 company, Lamborghini is a V12 company, Jaguar is a V12 company, though it hasn't sold one in years. Aston Martin? Well. But we're willing to forgive this conceit, which issues from Aston CEO Andy Palmer, a recent refugee from the upper ranks of Nissan who has two ideal qualifications for his current position, he is an engineer, and he is British. <laughs>